anyways. <laughs> well, and actually, that's a great segue too, because you know, how do you use your marketing, and are you using it for good or for evil? But then there's good also there's also the sense of well, what is art, and how do you capture that art, and is that art or is it arson? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> dun dun dun. What? Let's show our audience what we're talking about. <laughs> so let's bring up uh, this screen for the folks on Podbean. You won't be able to see this, but we will have links of these resources uh, in the description below. So what we're looking at right here are what? Not bonfires. No, no, no. Those are homes on fire. And, and they're not Photoshopped, uh, as one might think in this era of Photoshopping. Of digital media. Of digital media. Uh, these are real homes. And With a real fire. Really burning. With real fire. <laughs> <laughs> Not digital fire. Right. I mean, you know, if you're going to go all out, you get the real stuff, right? That's at least how hmm. the saying goes. Um, so this photograph was taken by um, a Russian photographer um, who is trying to document... Um, the you know annihilation of villages um, in Russia, the plight of the small farmers uh, struggling mm -hmm. to compete with bigger corporations. Um, so they were they were trying to make a political statement. Um, right. They were trying to do a, a do documentary of some sort. Again, the intent was to bring awareness to something, and the overall intent was to create something, uh, hopefully good, out of something that maybe wasn't that great. So this photographer decided to, um, these houses were very dilapidated. Nobody was living there. Um, they had been abandoned for quite some time. And so they set them on fire and took the photograph. Now, the, the big thing to keep in mind with this was not only were, were real buildings being burned down with real fire. I'm going to emphasize this again. <laughs> was it? Was it like fake fire, you think? or No, like it was really real. Really, really real fire. Like really, really, really real, real fire. burning fire. Fuego. Caliente. <laughs> and so that was my my Spanish for the day. <laughs> but the thing is, is that he had no permission to do this. Like legitimately from the article that we've we've gotten here from uh, that art newspaper dot com uh, was the fact that he did not get an OK from the historical society that's actually been trying to maintain and manage some of these smaller villages and, and keep them afloat. Um, or any local government system. Like, they didn't go through anyone. This photographer literally just grabbed what they could and set these buildings on fire and took the photo. And, of course, now you have to think about, well, security and safety then. Did they have, you know, the appropriate equipment to handle fires, especially if they were to spread? Because as you can see in the image here, uh, it's surrounded by a massive field. And so this is plenty of fuel to then have a massive fire outside of these buildings and have it spread. I mean, we all we all know about wildfires in California. So can you imagine that now in this Russian plane or field that's going on because all these buildings are literally going up in flames? And then think about where that could spread to and how that could impact at simply like an ecosystem or a local village nearby. Here he is trying to point out you know, that, hey, these things are happening to these small villages only to accidentally burn down another one. Ugh. I mean, there's so many what ifs, right? And I'm not saying this is what did happen, but that right there is actually very scary. It's like I personally, to get more into the personal uh, section of this, I mean, I personally understand where he's coming from. And I appreciate the sense of pointing out that these small villages are getting wiped out. And that there is no support from their local governments to try to give these people real opportunity. Because a lot of these villages, and this is in several com uh, several countries, where you're seeing big businesses or trade agreements wipe out small villages, what they can do. And a lot of the youth actually are moving out into the bigger cities. This is actually happening in several farming villages in Japan and have been uh, noted in several articles as well, where they're seeing a lot of the youth just disappear they're going to the bigger cities they're working for these larger companies that are putting their villages out of work and you know you're seeing really ghost towns being formed so i feel for that and i know like you know in utah actually we've been to a place in utah called green river 
in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and some of the 70s, it was huge for mining and for, I think, like uranium or something even, something crazy. It wasn't just like your basic like coal, for example. And it's now almost completely a ghost town. You go there now and you see the old, ho the old hotels that have been completely abandoned with everything still in them. Not to give you any ideas if you want a shopping spree or anything, but there's still everything in them. There's old bars and restaurants that still have liquor on the cabinet. Again, I'm not giving you an idea to break in or anything <laughs> and, and raid the place, but you know, it, it's, it's creepy in one way and beautiful in another, but it's mm -hmm. sad overall because you know, these places had life bustling in them and they're not being used now and they're just being left to rot. So I can understand the photographer's sense of duty as an artist in a way to highlight that. But then the question is, well, how do you go about highlighting that? And is that the right way to go? Yeah. And Teddy brings up a good point, a uh, good point. Uh, you know, uh, that dude should try something like that in Germany. Historical and ecosystem protection is big here. And, um, and apparently so is in Russia, uh, the Krokino foundation, uh, which is actually a foundation that strives to preserve, uh, Russia's cultural heritage has actually, um, he's, they're looking to, um, you know, uh, um, bring charges of arson up against this photographer because um, not only, you know, potentially this uh, photographer put the ecosystem around him, around the area in danger, uh, but also this could have this could actually be somebody's private property, right? Like somebody might actually own these homes. and They are actually. In the article, it does say, it does clarify that <clears throat> someone actually owned this property. So he was also trespassing and burning something that was not his that was owned by someone else. This was private property. And even if he came across them and said, oh, wow, they're, they're dilapidated. Nobody's living in there. You, you don't know if someone isn't truly living there necessarily as well right like you just because you come across a house that maybe isn't up to code you, you don't know the real situation you know maybe uh somebody did have plans to come back and rebuild them maybe you know mm -hmm. there's like all of these different things that they're squatters <clears throat> they're squatters exactly um you know it could be in refuge for animals even i mean there's there's so many other things that potentially this photographer did not even consider uh but of course the the biggest being of the course that the houses actually belonged to somebody um and so you know, it kind of brings up uh, the, the reason that we also are bringing it up is we want to talk about, you know, where do we draw the line for art, right? I mean, we look at uh, the sides of buildings, right? And we see murals. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that uh, there in a lot of the, the major cities in the U.S., I've noticed now that uh, there are these, um, and I forget the name for them right now, but they're like those electrical boxes or something uh, that exist on the corners of like tra what there's traffic lights yes yeah and uh, a lot of the cities um, have them uh, painted uh, you know and it's uh, they usually have the name of the painter and they always have like these cool either designs on them or something historical on them but they're they're these murals to sort of uh, beautify the the <laughs> just as like this big bulky gray box that's sitting there in the middle of the street uh, or on the sidewalk um, and try to bring some art there, you know. But obviously, those people probably went to a government, uh, to a local government, and said, "Hey, can I do it?" Or, you know, the government it, and, uh, themselves went out and tried to find people who do that, right? To beautify so, the city. Yeah. Yeah. And to, and to you know bring art on there, but um, but then there's other artists who um, you know use a lot of different kinds of media to bring their art across, whether it's their own bodies, whether it's other people's bodies, uh, buildings, uh, sidewalks. I mean, there's that guy who does this amazing sidewalk art uh, that looks 3D and everything like that. I'm sure you guys have seen photos of it online. Um, but there's also art like this, right, where this photographer uh, manipulated the environment in a pretty drastic way, right? Um, and so... It's, a, it's an interesting uh, concept, right? What is, where does art and not art, <laughs> you know, where's that line? And uh, what what is the actual definition of art at this point? You know, um, if any of you are familiar with Black Mirror, uh, it's a TV show from the, U, um, uh, from, uh, the UK and uh, they're amazing. <laughs> a little terrifying at the same time. Um, watch it with your own discretion, at your own discretion. But... They, uh, one of the episodes that I watched, uh, you know, had some questionable, um, it was an artist that did some a questionable thing uh, to try to get the prime minister to perform an act uh, under the guise of he had to save somebody. So 
and at, you know kind of at, at the end not to spoil her too much but you know it, it was basically for art's sake mm -hmm. in, in, in a way and again that uh, episode you know made us question what is art how far can you go when do you stop um you know what <laughs> did somebody just want to burn down some buildings and then we're like oh it's art <laughs> you know or is it that they had this uh, greater purpose in mind and they accidentally did something kind of not good yeah well and you know there's also the factor of when we say what is art there are many people say well it's the essence of a human being so it is their own bodies and it is their soul, which we cannot grasp or touch or feel. And it is the psychology of the human being, right? That is what art is. And so there have been several artists such as, and you actually brought this woman up to me, uh, Marina Abramovic. Ah, yes. Uh, and, I, and I don't know if I'm saying her name 100% correctly there, but in Belgrade, audiences cut her. In New York, they came in by the thousands and saw her and wept. Uh, she is an artist who messes with people's psychology. Whether you agree with that or not, you know, it is it has been, I guess, a, a point of contention for many. Many people feel split on this. Uh, but in 1974, Marina did a terrifying experiment. At a gallery in her native Belgrade, Serbia, she laid out 72 items on a trestle table and invited the public to use them on her in any way they saw fit. Some of the items were benign, a feather, uh, a boa, some olive oil, roses. Others were not. For instance, uh, she says, I had a pistol with bullets in it. I was ready to die. At the end of the six hours, she walked away dripping with blood and tears, but alive. She says, how lucky I am. She says in her still very heavy accent and laughs. There, there, yeah, one of the stories um, that I that I read about that was that, um, and I don't know if it was, uh, yeah, um, there, somebody had, like taken the pistol and looked like they were potentially about to use it on her. And actually other audience members came forward and stopped that person. Like that was part of it. Yeah. And like their it's actions and reactions crazy. were all part of art. They were basically yeah. a visual moving representation of what she could have just put on a canvas or what she could have just taken with a camera. She just let that ride. And there's actually uh, film footage of this. There was uh, several documentaries that have been put together about this experiment that you can find online and on YouTube. And she's done some other very interesting art artistic uh, showings uh, involving like pig's blood and a lot of other just fairly weird, interesting, different ways of representing what art could be. And that, again, you could find on your own. I'm not going to help you find that stuff. But that is also online, too, uh, that you can find. It's just very intriguing to get a sense of how other people look at something and convert it into their own representation. And there's some um, interesting commentary that I wanted to get to um, in our chat. Uh, uh, both Teddy and Bacon Profit are, are uh, essentially saying that, um, you know, art potentially should be about creation. It shouldn't be about destruction, um, which is a very interesting concept, right? Um, one might say that uh, destruction of something that is maybe inherently bad could also be art or maybe displaying that destruction um, in a way that benefits uh, could also be art. Um, art of course, is very subjective, right? That's, um, I haven't looked up the definition of art, but I'm assuming uh, that something about subjectivity is in there. Um, and so that is, again, uh, you know, the conversation about what is art, where do you draw the line, um, is also something that's interesting when you look across the world, right? Um, I look at some, at some art from other countries or other types of artists, or maybe, um, you know, places that I um, am not familiar with. And, you know, there's times where I'm like, wow, I can truly appreciate that. That's amazing. There's other times where I don't really understand where it comes from. Um, and so taking the time to also, um, I guess, um, 
uh, educate yourself on it, right? Educate yourself on maybe where the artist has come from. Like that's always really nice to to kind of um, like I found it fascinating when I was reading about Marina's backstory and um, uh, kind of where she's coming from and hearing certain things from her her words too. Like that's really interesting too. And I'm I'm wondering in this particular art versus you know art versus arson uh, situation, you know what what does the photographer say? Uh, you know. Uh, for example, one of the things that they were quoted as saying is, I didn't burn houses in which you could still live. The houses I chose were rotten with collapsed roofs. I did not do anything to harm anyone, you know. And so it's also very interesting, too, to kind of go back to the artist and say, hey, what exactly was your motivation? Um, <laughs> or, you know, kind of kind of walk us through your reasoning a little bit. But um, that, that can be tough, too, right? Because a lot of artists say, well, it is subjective and it is up to you to take w what you will from it. And they don't want to say what their main objective was besides that I wanted you to think, which is fair. But then again, it makes it more difficult to then say whether this person really is an artist or an arsonist, right? <laughs> See what you did there. And we actually have a, an interesting commentary about uh, Marina Abramovich as well that we were just talking about. Uh, Teddy says that I know her. She is amazing, but there's a difference. You can avoid her art. You aren't forced. She creates awareness with her destructive art that uh, that's what the burning guy wanted to achieve as well. But he did it wrong. And that's a good point, too. Right. Because who is the art actually hurting? And if if anyone also, you know, yeah. Are you being forced into a situation or aren't you? You know, for instance, with burning homes, it's very hard to control with Marina's art to a point it's controllable. And so again, we have to, it's, it's hard to try to confine everything into one simple box because it's just not that way. Just as it's very hard to, to put one specific person into a very niched group at times, because there are so many variants involved that it's, it, the same thing goes for art as well. And as art is basically what's derived from the human experience, that's going to have its variants as well. We're, we're complex human beings, man. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do agree. I do think that he, he went about the wrong way. Uh, I do feel he should have let the government know in that if you're not up, if you feel, for instance, that you, or you're hesitant about telling someone like the officials about what you're doing, then that should be an indicator that you're probably not doing something you should be doing. Well, unless you have an oppressive government. And well, and that's the other caveat then too, revolt, right? Revolt, revolt. No, no. <laughs> but you know, it, it, and that's the other thing too, right? If if you're in a governmental system where they don't support the arts, they frown upon it, and that's very difficult too. So, again, so many factors in this person. I think he he could have went better about it a better way than legitimately burning down these these buildings because. My whole thing too is you think about the number of homeless, the number of people who don't have shelters. And these homes could have been fixed or could have been renewed or something like that, potentially. Again, I don't know. I haven't seen them. But the land used in some different kind of manner. Exactly. Rather than just getting destroyed to make a point. Now, I mean, he's definitely making a point, right? There's articles being written about it now and there's a lot of coverage. So, I mean, maybe in a way it could bring more attention to his situation. Maybe that's also what he was hoping for, but he hasn't really responded, unfortunately, to reporters from what this article is saying. He had a little bit of initial thoughts on it and, and mentioned a few things and then just stopped uh, speaking to reporters after that, probably because, again, everything he says will be held against him. Uh, and he's not the only one, by the way, just to wrap this up at the very end of uh, this article. Uh, they actually do point out there was another Russian artist who, who did a, a, a few similar things, but he did it also in a very dangerous way, I would say. Um, so, for instance, there's an artist uh, who is uh, Peter Pavlensky, and he doused the entrance to Russia's Federal Security Service with gasoline before setting it alight. Earlier this year, he also started a blaze outside a Bank of France office in Paris. He was charged 500,000. Uh, it doesn't say the monetary unit, but I'm going to say, but it does convert it into U.S. dollars at $8,430 for the first crime and is currently awaiting trial for the second. Now you're doing it in public places where there are people. And I think that's even worse than what this other gentleman did. Right. Then you're sort of skirting the line between essentially 
terrorism in a way, right? Because I mean, you're 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 committing crimes that are putting other people in danger, um, that are destroying property uh, with potentially. I mean, we obviously don't know the full story for this particular gentleman, but with the intention of of just destruction. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's tough, too, with art because art encompasses so much, right? We're not just talking about sculptures. We're not talking about just photography or uh, painting or, or anything like that. But there's also, like, the sense of, like, performance art, too. So the sense of theater, the sense of film. And even with film and theater, they still put in those precautions to make sure nothing bad happens. So, if, you know, it, these artists seem to be almost trying to implement performance art into uh, a, a, a sort of more original art form, such as, let's say, the fine arts. And what's happening is something that could be very volatile because they're not putting in those safety precautions. So, And that's an interesting debate within itself that we won't get into today, but maybe another time, is that thin line bef between what is performance art, what is fine art, and then what is not art at all. 